aardvark needs my help with a case. A mystery concerning our friend Fern, because I'm Buster Baxter, private eye. Let me tell you how it all started. It was a rainy Tuesday, and the water dripped off the roof of the treehouse like spilled milk off a table ledge. Arthur, Fern, and I were deep into a game of trivia. Ah, I landed on blue. What's my question, Fern? What color? Blue, Fern. <sighs> okay. Did William Shakespeare write poems or plays? Um, plays? Nope. He wrote both. Oh, that was a trick question. My turn. I'm on yellow. Question me. Uh, Fern? What's my question? Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Science. What's bigger, the sun or the moon? Well, let's see. When Bionic Bunny flew to the sun to melt the icicles off his ship, he was really tiny. So I think the sun is bigger. Yep, you got it. Ha <laughs> ha! Comic book logic wins again. Your turn, Fern. <sighs> Actually, I think I'm gonna go home. I just don't feel like playing. But Fern, you're the closest to the star. You'll probably win. I'm sorry, guys. I just feel sad. Sad? Why? I don't know. It's a mystery. Bye. Okay. Bye, Fern. See you, Fern. I hope she's okay. Come to think of it, I haven't heard her laugh in a week. Maybe we could try to cheer her up. Podcast people, what do you do to cheer up a friend? I'm checking my inbox to hear from you. I cheer up a friend by giving them a hug. When my friends are upset, I ask what's going on, and I try to help. I cheer up a friend by playing with them. To cheer up a friend, I say, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Sometimes some people just want to be left alone, so sometimes I would just sit next to them and make them feel like they're not by themselves. Those are good ideas. You know, Arthur, Fern said it was a mystery why she was sad. And you know what a mystery needs? <sighs> Don't say private eye. A private eye, a case closer, a guy who's seen a few things and then adds those things together and comes up with an answer. Can I borrow your podcast stuff, Arthur? I've always wanted to record one of my cases. Sure, Buster. Need any help? Maybe, but Buster Baxter Private Eye is a loner. A wolf on the hunt. A dog without an owner. So, see you at school then? Not if I see you first, friendo. Not if I see you first. Podcast Nation, it was Wednesday, and it was still raining. Water trickling like maple syrup over blueberry pancakes. And like syrup, I stuck to Fern. The cafeteria, Fern eats alone. The library, Fern usually fills her bag with books like a kid getting candy on Halloween. But today, she does not take out new books. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the Poetry soul. appreciation. Fern's favorite words, class. Arthur reads a poem, but as Fern does not enjoy it or clap. Storm storm she is definitely not herself, but who's to blame? So Buster, please stop mumbling into that microphone. Everyone, let's stop podcasting during class, shall we? Sorry, Mr. Rapburn. So, Buster... I hear you're investigating what upset Fern. How's the case going? Brain, it's as stalled as the lunch line on pizza day. Maybe you should question her friends? Maybe I will. Maybe you should. Maybe I'll question you. Maybe I'll answer. Maybe you told Fern her poetry was as sloppy as a plate of spaghetti. Maybe you put that sour puss on her face. Maybe you should remember that Fern is my poetry slam partner. And I think her poetry is top-notch. Maybe I owe you an apology. <laughs> Maybe you do. But I do have information I think you should consider. Aha! Uh -huh. So you want in on the action, eh? Fine. Here's some cheese. Ew, Buster. Was that cheese in your pocket? Yeah. And if your tip is no good, I'm going to want that cheddar back. Yuck. Keep your cheese, Buster. I just want to help Fern. 
Suit yourself. What's your scoop? Last week, I saw Fern arguing with Muffy. Brain's tip sent me straight to Muffy Crosswire, heiress to an automobile empire and queen bee of the playground. On my way to Muffy's mansion, the rain ran down my umbrella like Mom's chili bubbling over the pot. But Mom wouldn't be the only one spilling the beans. Hello, Muffy. Buster, I've heard all about your investigation, but I'm innocent, I tell you. That's what everybody says, right before I get them to confess. Well, I'm not everybody, and I'm not confessing. I'm just telling you the whole story. Skip the flim-flam, Missy. Fine. A few days ago, Fern wore a new lavender bow in her hair. And everyone knows that color bow is your signature look. Exactly. Fuchsia or deep purple, I'd be fine with. But lavender? So we got into an argument. And you argued the smile right off her face. I swear, I didn't know she'd take it so hard. Please give her these. Five bows in all the other colors of the rainbow. I got them at the mall for her today. And I hope she feels better soon. Bye, Buster. A friendship tied up in knots over a bow. But I'd untangled it. This case was solved. I just had to check my facts with Fern. Hey, podcast people. Did you miss me? I'm going with Buster to meet Fern in the park. I'd crack this case wide open, and someone had to help me pick up the pieces. Buster, you really think Fern is sad over a hair accessory? That doesn't sound like her. Trust me, kid. This case is in the bag. I thought the hair bows from Muffy were in the bag. Ah, there she is. Fern, the girl with the long face. Hey, Buster. Hey, Arthur. How come we're meeting at the park when it's too wet to play? We're not here to play. We're here to deliver you a package with your name written all over it. Um, my name isn't... The Mill Creek Mall. He just means there's something for you in the bag. It's an apology from Muffy Crosswire. So your wires won't be crossed anymore, if you know what I mean. Hair bows? Oh, right. I forgot all about our little fight. So that's not why you're sad? <sighs> nope. You fellas are swell, but I'm still down in the dumps. Good day, gentlemen. At least she didn't leave you holding the bag. I'm no mathematician, but this case isn't adding up. Come on, Arthur. We've got to follow her. We do? Fern tried to give us the slip, but I stuck to her like peanut butter on bread. She went into her house, and now we're waiting outside. Uh, uh, and, uh... What are we waiting for again? It's a stakeout, Arthur. Be patient. There's something fishy going on here, and it isn't just a tuna sandwich in my pocket. That's what's so stinky. There's Fern. She came out of her house, and she's running away. I think someone's running after her. Look. Faster, come on. He's over here. Round the corner. Where'd he go? Look both ways and go. He's quicker than a jackrabbit. Whoa, Whoa. gotcha. Hey, what's the big idea? Binky, we thought you were chasing Fern. Chasing her? I was trying to jog with her. I told her that some exercise might help kick her bad mood. Oh, that's actually a good idea. So you're not the one who upset her in the first place? No way. And if I was, I would have sent her a nice apology note. Noted. Now I gotta run even faster to catch up. Bye. A note gives me one more idea, Arthur. It's a crazy plan, but like a kid at the end of snack time, I was down to my last chip. Let me get this straight, Buster. We're in the boys' bathroom because you want to stake out Fern's locker. Yeah, her locker is right across from the bathroom. And you slipped an apology note in Fern's locker, but you didn't sign it. It says, sorry for making you sad, kitty cat. And we want to watch her read it because... Because when she reads it, she'll go thank the person she thinks wrote it. And that person is our culprit. Hey, what are you two doing? Hi, Binky. 
Finding out who really made Fern sad. Cool. I'm in. Normally, I would avoid this sort of badly planned hijinks. But you guys are right in the doorway, so I'm in. Shh! She's opening her locker. She's reading the note. Ooh, what's it Let say? Me see. She's turning around and looking for someone? This could be it. Scoot over. I can't see. It's Mr. Ratburn. No, Mr. Ratburn. Are you Ratburn? Whoa! Whoa! What is going on here? I think they're trying to help me, Mr. Ratburn. By tumbling out of the bathroom like a bunch of kittens? Does that work? I got this, Mr. Ratburn. Oh, and here's my permission slip for the poetry slam. Thank you, Fern. On your feet, gentlemen. Buster, did you write this apology note to see who I would say thank you to? Um, I can't reveal my sources. But I already told you. Nobody made me sad. Haven't you ever had a blue day for no particular reason? I have. Me too. I don't know. Most of my bad days are because of DW, but I get what you mean. Well, if you have a bad, sad, or blue day, don't worry. You'll feel better soon. It's kind of like when it rains and rains. Sooner or later, the sun always comes out. But come on, it's time for class. And Buster? Yeah? You have toilet paper on your shoe. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Come on, we're gonna What'd be you get late. for question seven? I the math homework. Uh, Thank you. You did the book report, right? I didn't do the book report. In a case with as many twists as a pretzel on a roller coaster, we had taken one last sharp turn. I have no case. Hey, Buster! Hi, Fern! What are you doing in the park? Looking for you. I was thinking, that apology note? That was some good detective work. Thanks, Fern. One good part of my blue periods is that I often get great ideas for my stories. For example... All throughout Paris, wild animals were disrupting the peace. A hippopotamus swam in the Seine. A monkey had stolen baguettes. And a boa constrictor was slithering down the Eiffel Tower. No one, not even the police, knew what had happened. But Detective Virgul Watteau had the answer. Were the animals part of a villainous circus that steals French pastries? No. The animals were aliens, waiting to break out of their animal skin suits. Definitivement, no. So... What happened? Detective Watteau had noticed the rain. It had been raining all week. Water coating the city like the melted cheese on French onion soup. Ooh, that's good. I'll have to write that one down. The weeks of rain had caused the locks in the zoo to rust and crumble. So the animals had freed themselves. Wow! What a twist! Maybe Buster Baxter, Private Eye, and Detective Virgul Watteau should solve a case together sometime. You're a good egg, Watteau. If I'm ever in a jam, I'll call ya. See you around, Buster Baxter, until we meet again. And the gal walked right out of the park. The case was solved, the sun was out, and I'd learn something new about the human heart. I'd hang up my hat, for now, but I'd be ready for the next mystery, or my name wasn't Buster Baxter Private Eye. You've been listening to the Arthur Podcast. Hey parents, do you want your kids to answer my next inbox question? First, go to the Arthur website at pbskids.org to find out what I'll be asking. Then email me a voice recording of your child's response to arthur at wgbh.org. Your child's answer might even be featured on a future podcast. That's the show, Podcast Nation. If you liked it, ask your grown-up to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. You can listen to all our podcasts, play games, and more at pbskids.org. The Arthur Podcast is produced for PBS Kids by GBH Kids in partnership with Gen Z Media and distributed by PRX. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful kind of day. And I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you could
learn to work and play And get along with each other You got to listen to your heart Listen to the beat Listen to the rhythm The rhythm of the street Open up your eyes Open up your ears Get together and make things better By working together GBH Kids 